So my next presentation it's the other. So the next presentation is this uh, one. Presentation by uh, Dimitri Ruta from Aptic entitled Self Organizing peer-to-peer -peer learning for the 21st century education. Thank you, Dimitri. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, so you see there's a lot of many buzzwords in the title, but really what that's about is about um, trying to target the concept of learning uh, at the very heart of it and to try to improve learning efficiency and try to give some clues about how to learn sooner, faster, sooner, faster, and easier. Okay. So the content, as you can see, um, I start from uh, defining motivations behind the, our, our model. Then I'll move quickly and go through the model, uh, explain how it's inspired by peer-to-peer -peer sharing networks what's the self-organization element in there, and uh, then I'll, I'll go through all different projects within iCampus that uh, support the smart learning uh, project and uh, how it all fits together. And finally, I, I present some f future opportunities arising from this model. So the very basic question, is learning important? You may ask, uh, the answer is obvious, but if you want some evidence, you can actually see that uh, years spent in education directly translates into um, average household income. So um, then there is also a very clear relationship between GDP and the life uh, satisfaction, which can be considered as happiness. So extrapolating this logic, you can say um, learning makes you happy in the end and then allow you to have a more satisfied satisfied and fulfilled uh, life. Um, very simple facts about learning. I mean, there's uh, several good news there. I mean, first is that you will never be, uh, if I can say, dumber or less, more ignorant than you are actually at the very moment. So knowledge is the kind of, and learning is have this sort of retention properties that once you learn and it's uh, well assimilated into your context, then it sits in your brain. Uh, another good news is that uh, you will never have actually more time to learn than you do have not right now. So you, th there's a very actually positive picture that, uh, that you have so far. Um, that what may prompt you to basically uh, uh, learn as soon as you can to enjoy happy and fulfilled life. So why, why not everyone is doing that? That's the question. Um, why don't we learn sooner, faster, and easier? And if so, what are the challenges there, and what are the problems to be resolved? To learn sooner, there is always the issue of motivation. Um, so the, you, 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 you basically, if you're good at learning in general, then uh, learning is an enjoyable experience. Otherwise, it may, um, it may cause all kinds of issues, and uh, you don't see straightforward perceived rewards. You postpone it, and um, so it has to be enjoyable and, and a pleasurable, motivated experience to, to be able to act upon it as quickly as possible. To learn faster, then we, we are targeting the learning efficiency uh, problems, and uh, there is a number of issues around how to structure knowledge so that you can most effectively uh, learn from it, and how to design the, the knowledge process itself. Are the traditional learning methods efficient? Can we uh, better them? Finally, easier. That's a fairly um, positive outlook on that side. We have much deeper and wider access to information. Um, there's usually um, very good engagement. Uh, there's collaborative learning environments uh, coming up everywhere that uh, create more engaged uh, learning experience and uh, basically your, your brain is becoming more uh, engaged during the collaborative process 
and you effectively spend more time on, on learning and uh, create a more sticky sort of knowledge environment, if you like. Sorry? Uh, these are, this is the concept idea with set some results, but not overall. Yeah. So I was deciding to, I decided to actually hit at the, the very core of the learning uh, problem, which is the how to maximize the efficiency of learning, given all the assets at hand, all the resources uh, that, that you that you see. So. The model that, that, that we're proposing is trying to address several changes um, and transformations. The, the, the major one is to deviate, to move away from the formal teacher to student information flow. It's a kind of broadcasting exercise towards all-to-all -to -all sharing in which you no longer have very fine distinctions, be, be, distinctions between a teacher and a student and uh, basically the, everyone can swap roles and uh, move also away from the sort of uh, fixed knowledge that is pushed on and forced upon the students towards pooled approach so, so that you actually take the knowledge pieces that, that are most relevant to your context, your complexity, and they, they stay within your uh, uh, situation. Again, we also would like to pursue the dynamic data-driven monitoring and assessment of of the learning process. So we exactly want to know who knows what, how much, how fast he learns, how, how good he's at teaching as well, how much he's good at answering questions, uh, and so on. So you have a f want to have a full picture rather than un unguided, um, fragmented only uh, teach and hope for the best sort of approach. Okay, so let's consider a, a lecture scen scenario or you can say classroom uh, in which the teacher is basically trying to push the knowledge into the students' brains, effectively. Um, it's a one-to-many one relationship, and again, teacher is really unaware of how perceptive are students, how effective is he in, in transferring the knowledge to the students, has he achieved his goals as you go along. Some students may, be kind of, may miss one or two minutes of very important of, of the talk, and then straight away they, they become switched off for the rest of the, of the talk. So how to sort of address these challenges? So rather than uh, broadcasting the knowledge as, as traditionally, uh, what we would like to do is, is him to inject really the knowledge into the interconnected network of students. So what we have is the, the network, uh, so students would, uh, would be able to communicate among each other, exchange information, and act, act as uh, additional or super teachers, if you like, that would be able to, as soon as they pick up information, there would be an extra, they would act as an extra teachers to deliver uh, knowledge request services to other students. Uh, so that's what might, might happen. You, you kind of knowledge passes piece of information. Some of the Brighton students may pick that up straight away, while the rest uh, are not very clear, not certain about that. So what we want to do is that the students who are not uh, didn't pick one piece of information up, they would actually uh, submit requests for knowledge provision to the ones that uh, send, submit their, their readiness to, to provide services. And they would hopefully in a personalized way be able to explain, or it could be just a matter of simple question, it could be even explanation of the abbreviation that they missed, which is crucial for, for moving on during the lecture and so on and so forth, uh, such that student, uh, teacher only injects the knowledge to the system and the rest is sort of being shared and done by the students themselves. Now let's break it down a little bit more uh, into what kind of, what issues are involved in there. So learning, what we consider as learning is a kind of knowledge transfer uh, through imperfect channel. So we have certain uh, capture and retention rate of the knowledge, certain students are very good at catching the knowledge very quickly, but forget easily, the others re remember for longer and so on. So we can parameterize the problem by uh, specifying all different uh, and measuring all different properties of students. Uh, from the participant view, which is student or uh, student teacher kind of, um, 
we have this sort of self-organization because all the student cares about is he, he wants to learn the most, um, but at the same time he prefers not to teach or teach the least if he's not rewarded for it. Um, so, yeah, effectively why would he, it maybe may sound selfish, but why would he deliver teaching services if at the same time he can learn even more? So, there is a definitely a need of some kind of reward scheme or inbuilt in the voluntary process of providing knowledge. And the question is how to design the, this uh, all pieces together so that every student in the, in, the, in the network is motivated to contribute as well as learn. So overall it's a sort of well-balanced uh, knowledge exchange system. So let's recap what's happening. Learners submit requests for knowledge to, to the overall pooling uh, engine that collects uh, information about students, he knows who knows what, and he distributes this request to, to the kind of extended teachers who then serve the students back and as soon as they pick up this information then become themselves so as a new sources of knowledge. So if there was some kind of reward or prices as we can call it, they would very quickly reduce the prices uh, as a sort of general uh, on-demand effect. Um, demand supply sort of a free market if you like mechanism. Um, now the, the participants can dynamically swap, swap roles between teachers, uh, learners and evaluators. So there is a very much interactive and dynamic situation that is going on uh, that hopefully promotes the maximum transfer knowledge uh, model. So what, what you consider maximum knowledge transfer is that in a fixed unit of time you want to push the most uh, maximum possible knowledge to, to the group of students. Um, what are the key requirements for the self-organized peer-to-peer learning? We need to transform the knowledge a little bit different. We need to make it more granular so that it's much easier, easier and step, step through way of assessing that, um, figuring out who, who picked this knowledge up or not, and uh, so we need to, need to break it down a little bit, uh, especially if we want to go with that to the online learning, uh, possibly. Uh, there is a need of collaborating learning environment, which is providing the channel of interaction between students. Uh, uh, we need to exploit both formal and informal learning, so offline learning via social networks and, and CLE as well, as well as the formal, hopefully blending in into like a seamless unified model. Uh, and again, what we promote is for a most is, is the way of automated data driven control of of uh, who knows what who is allowed to pass uh, who is how how much reliable he is at transferring information um, we need to have a full full picture of what 's going on within the system and what is uh, others possible teacher 's performance at delivering the knowledge so that later we, we know what 's the reliability of of him delivering the teaching service. Finally, mobile platform would be handy to provide the anytime, anywhere uh, opportunities and the delivery. So that's how it all would fit together. There's also extra element of uh, grouping tool which encourages uh, diverse grouping, uh, social network and reward policy. Okay, so now what I want to say is uh, that's just the idea at the stage. We are evaluating uh, patent possibilities and all, kind of, all other um, ways of going forward with it. But as of now, we have a number of uh, aptic developed uh, systems that support smart learning, and that's what I'm going to briefly mention a few of those. Intelligent group grouping tool, um, it's a tool developed at Aptic uh, that tries to div diversely join uh, group students together so that they capture different elements of the same knowledge and create a synergy of interaction between them. That's the kind of uh, overall screenshot. You can manually uh, and automatically merge different students together in a group. Collaborative learning environment provides all kind of interaction channels, video chats, text uh, chats, uploading, joint uh, creation of the 
of the text and participating in the fora. Uh, what, what's, what's quite novel about this is you can actually monitor each student's contributions uh, as he writes towards the coursework and you can analyze, the, the teacher can analyze that and exploit, uh, assess what kind of contribution, where is the contribution coming from, how is the collaboration going. Uh, social network environment is obviously very much uh, useful for the offline learning and offline exchange of, of information, uh, addressing people's issues and even for, for more social purposes. So uh, that's the else screenshot of the system developed at Aptic. Plenty of different functionalities. Uh, ability to recommend content and recommend the best contact to respond to different uh, requests. Uh, finally, mobile learning platform. Um, we know mobile is, is uh, sort of uh, revolutionizing the world. Uh, internet traffic already dominated by mobile platform in certain countries uh, everywhere this year going forward. Um, so w w what seems to be the case is that only PCs held on, hold on to the dominance only during working hours. Everywhere, everywhere else is uh, dominated by the mobile traffic already. Um, so within the mobile, what we, what we delivered uh, as an organization, uh, there's a couple of projects going on. Uh, one of them is a convenience tool uh, just providing cer certain services about organization and uh, of, of curriculum and uh, finally another tool that uh, provides assessment, uh, online assessment of the effects of learning, which is a key component that would feed the knowledge uh, to the system and would allow to use this data to assess who knows what and who possesses the knowledge that we can then, who could be classified as teacher versus Okay. Um, yes, I think uh, that'll be it at this stage. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Any Again, one question. Scan. Yes. Yes. Uh, I, I apologize for too many questions, but this is important. I'd like to know how do you differentiate between mobile learning and e-learning? Uh, okay, I think uh, e-learning refers more or less to learning via uh, web, via the web, which can be accessed on the mobile side or non-mobile side. So mobile learning is a kind of a methodology and you have to access the web. I, I would consider mobile learning to provide just the facility and, and mobility for you to access the knowledge anywhere, anytime, sitting, uh, Walking, you have your mobile or you know mobile device always ready to for action. It's a few clicks away to to take actions and to provide answers or respond to others. Yes, I'm at standard six days old. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah. Thanks very much. Thank you, Dimitri. Thank you. Thank you.